Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. MIDI tutorial, we'll be taking a look at how to create a static particle field inside of Fusion Inside Resolve 15, and we'll do a little bit of motion graphic stuff around that just for fun, for kicks and giggles, but really this is just coming from a comment that I got that said, hey, how do you create a static particle field? And here we go. So the first thing we'll do is create a new timeline in our edit page. This is probably going to be a 1920 by 1081, and then we will create a solid color, drag this in, and right away, you can't use this as a fusion thing yet, so you need to right-click and go New Compound Clip, and we'll call this Compound Clip 1 because we are just creative geniuses over here. Then we can select this clip, go into Fusion, and now the fun part begins. So we will start off by dropping down AP Emitter and AP Renderer. And this is sort of the fundamental part of your particle system. So here you can see if we start playing, we've got particles being born. So how do we make this? be static. So we want basically a bunch of particles at the beginning and then no more new particles to happen. So in our emitter, the first thing we will do is create a bunch of particles at the beginning like we talked about. So like a thousand and then we'll add a keyframe and then we'll go to frame one and make this zero. And now if we play through, whoop, it did not work. We make this 1000 and now we've got our keyframes zero then there's another keyframe here that we made by accident so let's go ahead and clear that keyframe okay that's why that was happening excellent so now we've got a bunch of particles being born but let's make this a little more interesting so we'll go ahead and change our style from point to blob and we'll make these much smaller like point zero one I'll give it some size variance, and then we will change our region to a cube and make it much bigger, something like 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 by 3. Excellent. So that is a very you know, high dimension cube, but we only see 3. So now this is basically what the comment was asking for, basically play through and just get static particles doing nothing. If you want, we can make these last for longer. So... They don't die at frame 100. We can make this something like a thousand. Now, if you want to be a little more interesting than this, you can go ahead and add in a little turbulence, key turbulence, and just turn it way down to like 0 0.05. And now, if we play this through, you can see that we get a little bit of movement, maybe even less than that. So, like 0 0.02. Excellent, that's looking pretty nice. And now we'll go and add just a little bit of motion graphics around it. So we'll add in some text and a camera and some lights and make everything cool. So we will add a merge 3D for most of our scene. We'll attach a camera to that and a text 3D. Excellent. And we'll view this merge in two and one. And over here, we'll change our perspective to see the camera. And now we can move our camera back in Z space to be, you know, about there is probably good. Yeah, that looks fine. And then we can add in some text. We'll call this something like star. And we'll make this something like uh, Gotham light. And we'll make it really small. And we'll space it out. And move it down just a little bit. And then extrude it some. Oop. And then extrude it some. And we can zoom in, go around. You can see that now there's some, a little bit of 3D depth here. We can extrude it some more. So that's a nice little bit of 3D depth. And then we can bevel it some, just so we can catch the light a little bit. And speaking of lights, we'll add in some next. And I'll do this in another Merge 3D. And you can do this all in one, but I like to keep them a little more layery. So add a point light, and we can move this point light sort of forward and up and to the left. And we'll make it a little bit warm. And then we can duplicate this point light and bring it in and move this of back and down and to the right some and make it a little bit cool and now right now we're not seeing this obviously because we need to render it so add in a render 3d 
and change the render type from software to OpenGL, enable lighting and shadows, and then we will view our renderer here. And now you can see we get a little bit of stuff going on. So let's make this blue one a little more happening. We'll change this from the camera view to perspective so we can zip around our scene. There we go, now getting a little more blue in there and that's looking pretty good. Now let's animate our camera some. So I'll go into camera and go to frame zero, control S because this is a beta and you know, I just recorded this tutorial most of the way and then it crashed. So keyframe the Z offset, then go forward to frame 90 or so and move it forward some. Forward is this way, Theo. So do about there. And then that's looking pretty good. So then after this, we can just add a quick little background and that'll automatically drop a merge in there for us. So we'll view our background here and you see we need to switch our inputs and we can do that by hitting control T. Now our background's in the back and that's looking pretty good. Just do one more, one or two more little things. We'll add a glow and view that and make the glow size a little bit smaller a little bit less intense and then we'll also just for kicks add a chromatic aberration and view that and just turn it down a little bit just getting a little bit of that stuff going on the outside and that makes it pretty cool so just that easy. We've made a static star field and it's, you know, not the worst looking thing in the entire world. And I, th I think it's a pretty good time. Get to introduce you a couple of new little fusion things for some of the people out there who haven't maybe played with the 3D stuff in fusion, a little more into the 3D stuff. It's not that intimidating. It's not the only 3D application I would learn, but you know, it's a nice little thing for simple little motion graphics stuff like this. I think it's a little more robust than After Effects in that sense. So for 3D stuff, if you've only got fusion After Effects, I think Fusion is a little better choice, unless you're using the Cinema 4D stuff inside of After Effects, because After Effects does have Cinema 4D Lite. If you want me to go into a little bit of After Effects and Cinema 4D Lite stuff, I would love to do that, because it's been a while since I've touched Cinema 4D. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you'd like to give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Meester Media YouTube channel. If you want even more goodness, check out MeesterMedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of stuff to make your stuff better, faster, easier, etc. So go over to MeesterMedia.com slash products. Check out some of that stuff. Also, be sure to share this video with your friends because, you know, maybe they want to know how to make a static particle field inside of Fusion, inside Resolve 15. Anyway, once again, I have been Theo with Meesner Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.